Welcome back to Cincy Wells. Today we're going to be doing four well fitting around Cincinnati area. Let's just get started. Today we're going to be doing some track side here at South Pupla. Well, not with long. Because we would get to up about 351 would have CSX 1850, the LNN Heritage Locomotive, trailing second. But the thing is though, it has a mate leading the way. So we decided just to pull off the side of Lowe's, head over to the tracks on the CO6 Toledo subdivision, and catch that before heading back on the road. What this train is, is basically 276. Basically a Louisville, Kentucky, all the way up towards Columbia. Now, 276 is a ROAC that will go to Bayer Dashla. Then take the connection to go east through Foxjoy, Willard, Greenwich, and then out towards Columbia. So, 1850 is the reason why that we were here on the Toledo Sub. After finally five minutes later, getting the 276 clear, the South and Pukla siding. What right after that, they get a signal for 351 to head south on the Toledo subdivision with the 1850, the LNN, Louisville and Nashville. It's trailing 351. 45, 74 south, clear 8029, M351, 6 south. This will be my sixth heritage unit of fleet, so yeah, that would be my sixth one. Many more to go, so there's more giddy relief. I still need to see 1871, 1836, 1972, um, 1897, and 1853. So those ones I still need to see still. But at least I caught the L and N today. After catching this one, we would get back on a road. 75 southbound towards Cincinnati, where we would meet up with my friend in Walmsburg, meeting up with him, and then going down south towards Walton, Kentucky, where we would well in there for only, we would thought we would go to Walton, Kentucky for a long time.
a double AC44C6M long hood forward on this grain train heading south. This would not be Walton, but where are we even at? Well, if you do not recognize this location, this location spot is Erlang in Kentucky. The reason why we would come over to Erlanger is because that we would give some heads up about a NS-188 cleared Lexington, Kentucky on a NSCNOTP May. However, though, this would not be 188. What I thought this would be 188, this would be 61C for Burns Harbor, Indiana with a double AC44C6M leading the way on 61C. Let's take that back a notch. Seeing it in Erling in Kentucky, now we're seeing it again in Wong, Kentucky. We would not stay here too much longer. It's because that we got a good shot of mine because we would get a 0013 as a loaded well train heading south towards Memphis, Tennessee. Because it would be a SD-40 duo leading the way on this WO-13. Let me just say this. Holy smokes! That sounded good! Especially when we're out in the middle of nowhere here at Glenco, Eagle Cut. Man, this was good shots. Even the video from the drone got it really good as well. And the picture got it really good as well. So that was absolutely bonus. Bonus to get this shot. Man. Me and my other buddy hasn't even been here yet. This was an absolutely bonus. The only reason why that I heard about this well train heading south is because per to the radio that we were in Erlang and Kentucky earlier we would hear dispatch talking about this well train heading south towards Memphis, Tennessee. It would not be long till we made up our minds to go back to Walton, Kentucky. We would get a northbound, but he would be coming up quick.
Okay. Even though this was my choice. A lot of driving that we did already without eating all day. Well, this would be the last spot till we get something to eat. But we would come here to Norwood, Ohio. Here at the Iono Macola Yard. Just to check out what the yard looks like. Well, they do have Iono 3488 and 4083. And Iono, which is Ohio Central, 4030. They're all being kept. So they're not going to be used any more longer. So that's why we decided just to come here in McCullough Yard. Just to see those units. Get a picture of them. For me, however, I did not get a camera picture of them. I just got drone pictures. Which, for me, feels like it's better. Because we already gotten them pictures already without going towards the woods area to get sneaky and not being found. This was, like, pretty cool because I was, like, getting all the units that were kept. But now we see I and O 5016 leaving the yard at Mokola. I don't know what he got planned to go to, but... We end up catching here at this crossing, and then going up the next crossing, seeing him once again, just be luck. I figured, however, we would go to Glendale, just to go to, to get something to eat there. Well, this restaurant that is right by the tracks, ending up having good food, so we end up going there instead.
I have no idea who this one is. Maybe I'll check it a little bit and see if that CC train ever left. Just be noticing that this is 188 with the fake bonnet being as big DPU when coming up here quickly because I thought this train would be longer than I thought. End up being like two minutes for him to clear. Here comes the fake bonnet. Well, that was very, very nice to see a fake bonnet on 188. I thought this train was long gone already, and I thought it would be up by Camden on the new Castle District. Nope. Nowhere near that yet. This would be our last train here at Glendale for the night. However, I would get up at 5 a.m. the next morning. 360 would be the last one after coming from Cincy towards Avon, Indiana. It was a pretty good latch up leading away on this 360. That was a pretty sweet contest. Two SD40s. And basically the Union Pacific throwing second and the mate that was leading. 4574. Well that unit was being led on 351 earlier with the LNN. Gotten some heads up that the LNN would not leave. Queensgate because they were having some engine issues at the engine shop so they're not going to be able to move that one anytime soon maybe that was because the reason why until tomorrow I will be getting up at 5 a.m. doing some more track siding
Good morning in North Vernon, Indiana. Well, we were in North Vernon. Now we're heading to Butlerville, Indiana to chase L422. We started our chase in North Vernon. Now we're here in Butlerville, Indiana. Just because my friend has decided we do something on the Indiana sub in the morning. Just because we thought we would get L452 and L422 as well. Well, this morning we would only get 422. Let's just get the rest of the action of 422. They were ending up doing some more switching. They've been doing switching since they arrived Butlerville. I figured, however, we would get some pretty good um, switching action here at um, Butlerville. Did not get the drone up. I didn't even add the drone at the time. But they at the hotel one. Oh well, got some pretty good pictures here at Butlerville. I figured, however, their power would pull up to the switch and then swap their crews to the other engine and then head west at the west end of Butlerville siding just to get their cut.
man, that sounded good. Well, we can't chase any more longer. And this would end up at being our end point on the Indiana sub for the rest of the day. We came back here at Glendale. Just because we would end up meeting up with my friend Evan, the nice whale oh, fanner once again. Oh. However, we get a northbound NS. This would be a inner model. Well, this one was used to be very long, but before the train went to the crossing south of town, the DD went off. However, we get a very surprising for southbound CSX. would end up being the Tropicana local that served around Springville area towards Cincinnati, Ohio with a Lion 3 C leading the way. The Lion 3 C paint scheme ended up being on one of our CSX 65-64. would end up getting a four-engine lag up of EMD SD-40, leading the way on L-425. I thought it would have one of the Line 3 c Jeep leading the way on L-425, but the SD-40 ended up leading today's L-425, which is cool seeing an SD-40 quad hero. So that was pretty nice to see. We did not get anything else besides of getting a word that 216 would be leaving the yard, the skate yard, towards Twin Oak, Pennsylvania, since that goes to all the way over there now, since all the way over the Sand Patch Division in Baltimore, Maryland. They're working the tunnels over there, so they're not going to be having any trains go through that area. That's why 216 and 217 comes from Twin Oak, Pennsylvania.
double GEs leading the way on 141. 141 gives us a good home show here at Springdale. We've well, never really been in Springdale before, even though it's north of Glendale. So it's like, wow. It, it, the shots are not really that good. It, it's okay, but I can take it. But it would have been better if it was a little found. 142 has not came through yet. It will be at some point in the afternoon, or even some point after sundown. So, 141 did not take an NS connection at Hamilton, at Butler Street. They were supposed to, but they did not. I, we went to NS over where the connection take. That's NS where the connection line is. So, we went to a spot on it. We thought 141 was going to take that connection. Per to the radio, they did not take a connection. They ended up calling Walnut Street. So south of town, so I kind of really thinking coming here to Springdale. After we get 217, which 217 is Trent Oak, Pennsylvania, towards Louisville, Kentucky. We would get some heads up that their Washington courthouse turned with head south towards Oakley Yard in Norwood, Ohio. So I think about this one. After getting 217 here at Springdale, all the boys, three of us boys, and my dad, of course. We would all just go straight south towards Norwood, Ohio, which is Oakley Yard, just to find a turn and maybe chase the turn. Maybe that. That would be really cool if we chased the turn north. They were heading south like an hour ago. Now they should be heading their way back north within the next hour or so. They're probably going to do some like switching around Oakley or uh, probably.
We made it to Norwood, Ohio by Oakley Yard. Made it to this spot. And we end up seeing some old signals here. And the fact that I would get the drone up in the air just to see what's going on. Thankfully, I have one more battery left before I have to charge it before tomorrow. I see this couple jeeps that's just sitting here by the signals with some BNSF units as well. And then I found out these units are coming. The 3313 is going to hook up to the three BNSF units. But then the 2103 it's going to get decoupled from 3313. I figured, however, I thought those three BNSF units were going to go on to the turn and head back north. In fact, I was actually wrong. You can see here, 3313 is hooked up to the three BNSF units, which is I don't know. So, we get see them to hook up to the cut of line of cars and then we end up just going north of the Oakley yard other side of the yard Load something right here. Ah. Sand, I guess. Uh, or. Nope. Sand. Yep. Well, the INO train, which is the Washington Courthouse turn, got in their authority to leave Oakley Yard, taking our way to Madison, Ohio, which is on the INO. See this CPL right there? That is the only CPO shot that you can get along the line. I figured, however, I thought the shot would go good. I was wrong. The shot, eh, back and forth, eh. It's, it's okay, could have been better, whatever. So, we make it here. We end up going all the way up to Wilmington. The bridge over there just to get that shot over there. I figured however that would be this spot over here and then the Wilmington wall. So we decided not to only get Wilmington, we decided to just get this shot real quick and then head back on the road. So we did just pull off on the side of the road, we saw a deer right next to the tracks, or road, between here and there, but then we made it run away. But then we heard a rumble pretty loudly of the three GEs. NSF locomotives on I know.
we end up getting ahead of it after getting that shot. Now we're here at Wilmington getting this shot as well. This would be the last spot here getting INO for the day. And then we go to Glendale afterwards. Thanks, Evan, for letting me know about this train heading south. If we didn't know about this train, we wouldn't be chasing it by now. We probably would have been in Glendale or getting something to eat or something like that. It was really cool just to chase INO because I really don't see INO much in Michigan. The only time I do was is the Flatlock turn, so that's pretty boring a lot of times. I don't even know what the power is. Here, what I heard. 34.89 was the power for the last turn for Flat Rock, the last time back in like February. Now it's down here in Macola. But then, it's probably different power up in the Flat Rock, or, or Delta, for the Flat Rock. After chasing Indiana Ohio Railroad on the Washington Poorhouse, we would head back to Glendale. The heating at the west front that is right by the Cincinnati Tunnel. I have no idea what the symbol on this one. By the time we got here, it was lit up for a high clear for a NS northbound and immortal. Probably 26C. Either that, it's 28C and then after that we got a restricting and then a high clear for CSX I-142 for North Baltimore, Ohio.
after making up our minds to see what food that we would get and waiting, we would end up getting another high clear for another northbound on the Cincinnati tournament. So we decided to film it. I did not like put it on my camcorder because it was so quick and the gates were going down before we were going out. So I had to shoot it with my phone here. It's not bad, but I would have probably shot with the camcorder. That did better anyway. After getting 188, it would go dead silent for like how long? For like two hours, something like that. But then we ate, got ice cream at the local gas station here in Glendale. And then after two and a half hours later, we get a signal for a northbound 350. And at this point, me and my friend Radio went off at the mile post 13.5. It went over that, but then this train got a hot box. And we were like, oh no. We're on the wrong side though. You can basically see that it's slowing down for sure. I was like, don't block this over. I have my key on the other side of the car. My dad was on the other side. I have a key. I was like, uh oh, don't stop. But then it would be ending up very short, so that was. That would be another 30 minutes. There wouldn't be anything else. So after getting the 350 here, we would call it a night and go back to sleep at the hotel. By the time I wake up tomorrow, we would be out for another day. Good morning. We decided just to see some couple trains on the Indiana sub once again. For a good reason. If you don't know this, me and my friend were trying to go out in Butlerville yesterday for L452. It's a climate local from Metro to Cincinnati. That went late yesterday, so we ended up just catching L422. I figured, however, 453 would be wanting today, so that's the reason why we were out trying to catch it. But, they ended up just being held up east of town for a eastbound manifest that was heading towards Cincinnati, Ohio. It would be M574 from Memphis, Tennessee all the way to Cincinnati, Ohio.
right after we decided to get 574 on the Indiana sub, we ended up just waiting for L453. After they would go to launch her on the week one, whatever it is, L453 would get a easy one from the dispatcher. They would not go too terribly far besides this. They would need another eastbound through Milan siding, but we would not wait for that. After we get 453 in downtown Lawrenceburg on the Indiana sub, we decided just to head north on 275 and then 75 towards Carlisle, Ohio. Because not only that we're going to welcome in Carlisle, we're going to be spending there for the whole day. And after that, the trip will be over. That's why we're going to call out today. Let's head over to call out. So basically, now we're here in call up. And I would be given some heads up like after day one. I would get some heads up about 561 27 would have the C4 1982 the Heritage Book Alert at reading 561. So that's the reason why we're in call up. And I especially Carlisle is going to be a good day, even though it's kind of dead right now. 142, we're heading north for Trump Baltimore, Ohio, with a solo GP leader. I think they would have a GPU sometime soon. So, this will be the only train that we would get so far. So, it was kind of disappointing before getting 142. Dead for two hours to wait till 142 show up.
guys, that was CSX I-142 at Carlisle. <laughs> So that was 561 there, with the Seaboard Heritage locomotive. I have really never gotten a CSLR picture with 1982. The one time I had never did, and the only time when I saw it was back in September night. And the only footage that I got at the time was my camcorder and my phone. I didn't even get a camera shot. I was so mad. Till today, I got a camera shot. But no drone footage. It's like flying in the, up in the air, got my shot, and I did not hit the cord button. I was so mad that I did that. Just like, man, come on. But at least I got ground footage of 1982. After getting 1982, got the drone up in the air, got a perch light signal for 141. I would see what L424 has for power today. AC4400 leading the way, the Mace 4556, and then a Jeep 2752. So that's what it's power for today. And then I flew it back where I landed from so then I would get ready for 141 I figured however B would get the drone up in the air for 141 but I did not decide to do that 141 was flying south here at Carlisle, Ohio
after 141 cleared the north end of Carlisle. 424 with a signal heading northbound with the last step that I said earlier. So they would fly north towards Lana, Ohio. Since recently, us well fans have been getting some updates about the symbol. So L424 and L423 are back. Which are good. Well, because all the trains that we see with it, we have seen good units on L424. Whatever, you get to know what I mean. Like, all my Cincy videos are linked above of all the good stuff that we see back then with L424 23 as well. But, yeah. You technically know what I mean. But the thing is, though, 108 AC4400 had like slow ditch lines. They were moving pretty slow. So I don't know if they changed that or not. So I don't know. Whatever. After getting L424, we end up getting a northbound signal for M276. Basically in Louisville, Cumberland, Maryland. That had a Y and 2 duo leading the way on the 276. Which, a Y and 2 duo ain't that bad. Pretty cool to be honest. So, getting a Y2 duo is pretty sweet. Because I know sometime within a year, all the Y2s that are in the Y2 paint now are going to go bye bye into Y2C paint. After getting 276, we end up getting another signal 
for B523. They're loaded and heading fast for Detroit, Michigan, a little town. So I think whatever we're gonna get B523. We're gonna go up to Camden, Ohio. Maybe do a little bit of world fighting on the Newcastle district. Maybe catch a train here and there. And then go get some to eat at Eco Dairy. Which, I wouldn't lie, they got some pretty good food. And same thing with their ice cream too. Wow, their ice cream was good. So that's where we'll go right after we get B523. Safe to say, this will be the only train that we would see on the Newcastle District. But it would be really cool to see one, and I ever did. Seeing one by the Depot Dairy. But, however, this is not 54 b that I was given heads up on the Facebook page. This would be at S123. Basically, it's Decatur, Illinois, to Chattanooga, Tennessee. So, there, it is a daily manifest for Chattanooga. I say after getting this manifest, I would have to go straight home after eating my ice cream and food. Anywho, I will see y'all maybe somewhere out there on the Michigan State. Or... Bye guys, stay well. Signing off here at Camden, Ohio.